podcast. Is this the end of our civilization? Prepare for gaming domination. The mightiest monster of them all. Grimlock the Dino 9, Gamezilla. Welcome to the GameZilla Podcast, your last line of defense in major gaming news. I'm your host, Grimlock, and with me in the GameZilla Media Studios, my co-host, <laughs> audio producer, <laughs> Butterboy! Oh, I was just assaulted. <laughs> He's assaulted I'm Butterboy. assaulted Butterboy now. <laughs> I, uh... I have a. I, I was a victim of a of a sledding accident this weekend, and I have whiplash. And, and I just, clearly and forgot. Grim, and Grim decided today would be the day to shake me while the intro's playing, and my neck hurts really <laughs> bad. Ah, uh, we're in for a fun time. I am the Deadite Knight, aka the King of All Things Buttery. <laughs> Sadly, I must. I must just own what I am. You must own it. It is the buttery way. Oh, it, it is. It is the way. Anyways, welcome to episode two hundred ninety-six of the Games Little Podcast, brought to you by our supporters on Patreon. Patreon.com slash. Uh, games of media go there and support my medical bills from Grimm's assault <laughs> for me having whiplash it's now all in Grimm because I can't sue the guy who hit me with a sled because I uh, didn't get his name so I'm suing Grimm now you'll need to pay for his lawyers uh, no but uh, the Patreon funds go to uh, the continued life success and growth of the GameZilla podcast and we so greatly appreciate everyone who contributes and Grim, if you can real quick pull up I know we had a couple new patrons this week if you want to I don't know if you can get into that shout out. If not, we'll do that by the end of the episode. Um, but shout out to Mark. Mark, I think I think we have the one new one. Just right? the one new patron. Well, thanks, we already, Mark. We already shouted out JJ, but we'll give him another shout out. And JJ, that's right. Our two <laughs> new patrons. So thank you so much for your support. And uh, remember, there is exclusive podcasts uh, at the five dollar exclusive content level available. Every show on the Gamesilla Media Network posts one exclusive show per month, but new. Oh, yeah, you got it. Never yeah, mind. Yeah. There's, there's some new action now. And now at the $1 per month, that gives you access to a brand new show called The State of GameZilla, which... No. Gr- what's it called? State of the Zilla. State of the Zilla. Well, then you take it. You were on the show. Yeah, I was on the show. Tell them about Craig it. Craig WK and I jumped on the first ever episode of State of the Zilla, and it's going to be a monthly release at the dollar mark where you're going to be able to dive into different people every month. So whoever is in the studio during that time will band together, and they're going to start picking topics that they are all connected with to just kind of have a fun discussion t- table. Um, and so... Craig and I decided to pick the. We had, I had a lot of fun talking about next gen, current gen, and how how uh, gaming as a service is changing everything. So we, I thought it'd be interesting to have that discussion with Craig, someone that's very retro game, you know, retro gamer, not not yeah. as much into this uh, current gaming scene. And so it was fun. We got to really discuss it. You know, topics. I don't want to give too much away, but one of the topics that we got brought up that was interesting was his fear of not having physical games like a Steam library if one day it just wasn't there. Yeah. So you know, like if the government stole all the games. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> you know, if I mean, Mr. Biden might just make them all disappear because he's very anti-gaming. Is he? Oh yeah. Is is Joe he called, anti-gaming? He called a developer just uh, just the other day. He called him a, a little creeper. Wow. Yeah. This billionaire. I Sle- Come on, Sleepy Joe. <laughs> yeah, sleepy Joe. Very, Might not be so sleepy if he did very, some gaming. Very anti-gaming. So, anyways, um, mm-hmm. but yeah, it's it's a good time. Show runs about an hour, and uh, we wanted to bring some sort of content to the one dollar uh, patron so people can get a taste of what it is, and if they really like it, they want more, they can just you know move to the five dollar perk wonderful state of the zilla first episode was very good and i'm looking forward to see who jumps on episode two all right well make sure you uh swing on over patreon.com slash gamezilla media and learn more about how you can support your favorite podcast us yeah i think craig states it here right right on mixer actually said it the future is stupid and i hate it that was pretty much his take uh on um the the patreon show state of the zilla all right sounds right yeah Anyways, uh, we got some news for you today. We're gonna get we're gonna get ready for that. Uh, is there anything else that we need to talk about before that? You got anything? Anything special? Do I have anything special? Yeah. Uh, Mickey, could you IMDb? Can you die from whiplash? <laughs> okay, I, 
IMDb. IMDb. WebMD. WebMD. There's not enough blood going to my brain. We need to stop the show. (laughs) We need to stop the show. Uh, Uh, What what I meant to say before we got into the news was I have this card over here. Where is it at? Uh, Is it a Get Well card? Xbox Live card. And I made. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Oh. Ah, I thought you got me a get well boy. card from my. Uh, How my you told me you were hurt literally when you showed up to the show. So you don't just keep a stock of get well cards at your home. I mean, I pro- Jade probably does. I probably have a drawer of cards I could like, you know, happy birthday and scratch off birthday and say happy hurt neck day. <laughs> Thank you. <Ooh. laughs> that make me feel nice in my heart. Dark. Oh, yeah. whiplash. Uh, four. Killed instantly. Well, I didn't get killed instantly. Or did you and we're all dead? Now we know the truth. But, yeah, I mean... <laughs> Time for the news. Here's the news. I'm searching the web for the latest gaming news. Searching MotorCityGaming.com. Downloading headlines. Now let's have it. What about this monster story of yours? Download complete. Topic number one. Every single video game you've ever loved has been delayed. No! <laughs> Every single one. Even the ones you're playing already, they're delayed. Donkey Kong Country <laughs> 2 got delayed? It's delayed. You can't play the cartridge anymore. No! Darn you, Craig! In your future! <laughs> I don't want your future! <laughs> Uh, no, but seriously, in this past week, we have been hit with, uh, the delay just, just week of big AAA games just getting pushed. Uh, this is, we always talk about it. Like, I feel like the last two years, we're like, this is the year of the delay, right? Like, we've said that before. We're like, oh, this year's way worse than last year. 2019 was smooth. I remember, like, 2017 and 2018 being bad, but I remember last year being pretty low-key. Yeah, so, but uh, th- now we're only a few weeks into, what, two, three weeks into January. And we're looking at the things uh, like um, event Marvel Avengers from Square Enix being delayed, pushed out into, was it was a May release and now it's a fall, pushed back into the fall possibly. Well, Let's be honest, maybe we get it this year. When was the last time Square released a game on time? I don't know, <laughs> like, but still, it I feel counts. like Square has never it released still a video game on time. So that got announced along with uh, things like uh, Final Fantasy VII remake getting pushed again, Square. So you can make your comment that you want. Uh, but before we get into the, the other ones, uh, Iron Man VR. No, Iron Man VR got pushed. They're taking the May slot that uh, that Marvel Avengers had, just so they can get away from. They don't want to compete with Half Life. That's what it says. So they delayed it. Iron Man VR was going to be the gaming sensation that caused me to buy a virtual reality headset. Man, listen, it seems like one of the most promising combinations of franchise and technology based on our hands-on demo. (laughs) I just read that in an article because I don't believe any of it, obviously. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, but anyways, it wants to... It was supposed to be released in February, but it wants to avoid Half-Life VR, and um, so it will be moving into the (laughs) vacant May slot that the Avengers Uh, left behind. I like the idea that that you can only buy one VR game. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like right. those are the only two VR games that were going to come out that That's month. It. They're like, oh, we better yeah. push and, it. And they both know that if that if Beat Saber drops a DLC pack, they're both dead in the water from day one. Yeah. So yeah. Um. But obviously, the surprise announcement today was, um, oh my god, I forgot I forgot the name. Not not. What's Chops' game that I shared in the chat? Dying Light. Dying, Dying Light. Light Two. Dying Light 2 got announced today that is being delayed. This one's really interesting because it was uh, just basically set for a spring 2020. And now yeah. it's a we don't know. <laughs> yeah. well, that's a that's a real aggressive change to, hey, it will come out sometime. You can presume March through May. And then it was like, nah, you know, we don't really know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, just just keep an eye on it. And they said when they know more, <laughs> they'll let you know. You know what that sounds like to me? Metroid. <laughs> hey, we uh we screwed up and uh, we're gonna remake the whole game. We'll talk to you when we're ready. <laughs> are, are you showing me this this quote by uh, Miyamoto? Miyamoto. Oh no, I'm sorry. I, oh. I, I had I had I had dead eyes. I was oh. lost. Oh. I was lost in those sweet buttery eyes. So I, I, eyes I'm, I'm gonna a... use it though. I like it. So. Uh, Miyamoto-san said, I, a delayed game is eventually good, but a rush game is forever bad. That's true. 
sometimes <laughs> a delayed game can also be forever bad. I'm sorry. Maybe mm. that quote was be with like within the Nintendo world. Like, we're going to delay Metroid and it'll come out and it'll be great. I mean, it works for Crackdown. <laughs> <laughs> Did, well, okay, here. Okay, I'm not saying this to be oh mean. Oh my god, this is an honest question. Did Crackdown ever come out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah okay, yeah, yeah. straight to game because it's on Game Pass. Oh, okay. I don't think anybody ever bought it because I know that Grim likes Crackdown, but then never talked about it, so I assumed it never came out. <laughs> no, I liked the original Crackdown. It hasn't been good since. So the, different, different times. Um, but so yeah, <laughs> Dying Light Two. We don't even know when it's coming out anymore. And that leads us to the six-month push of Cyberpunk 2077. This was the big one, the big hit. Cyberpunk 2077 coming out this September. <sighs> so what, March? Yeah. 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 April? No, yeah, it was March. Yeah. yeah. It, it was a big It was a big pushback. Six months is a big push. Like, like I, you're used to seeing, like, um, so uh, Final Fantasy, I think, was a month. They got pushed, yeah. you know, like, and so a lot of times, like, I think we need 30 days to just polish things, just clean it up and get it ready. Six months, though, that's big, and then you have to wonder why and, like, what the cause is, and then you also have to, like, start to think about things that they said. Originally, they said there will be no uh, next-gen, f- like, um, patching done at launch. Well, yeah, you're coming out in March. Why do I care if you don't have... PS5 and Xbox Series X stuff ready, yeah. you know, because the systems aren't out. Now you're coming out in September. You're com- you're right in that window now. So is the game going to be optimized? Are we gonna are we gonna see a dual launch now where this game is going to come out for both both um, generations at launch? You know, type deal. Is it going to be that thing where by by this t- by the time this game comes out, we will we will know release dates. For both the Xbox and the PS5, absolutely. I'm assuming, but I think I think it's a fair assumption that we'll know that unless the PS5 <laughs> gets pushed beyond holiday 2020, which I don't see happening. That's the only way we wouldn't have a date. Man, why you got why you got to pick on the PS5 and not the Xbox getting pushed? Has Microsoft ever pushed back a hardware release? <laughs> Sony can't get anything together. I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if Sony's like, yeah, well, mm. you eh, know, we need six months. Yeah, buy, <laughs> buy more headsets. <laughs> so, um. Yeah, anyways, the idea that this game is coming out so much closer to to that release now, I feel like this game, not only are they taking six months for whatever reason, hopefully part of that plan is to also announce th- this information uh, along with, you know, whatever else they're trying to figure out with this game. Cause they, because they're dabbling around with multiplayer aspects of the game now. Originally, there was no multiplayer, and then now they're, they're working on multiplayer, but it wouldn't be ready at launch. But now is it going to be ready at launch? Because you pushed it six months. So there's just confusion here is that, okay, so you pushed it out six months. Does that mean I still have to wait? So now i got to wait six months for the game and then what, an additional six months for multiplayer or for, you know, like am I, like how is this going to work? They said it's not coming this year. Yeah, and that's what I mean. Like they, I, <clears throat> I want them to be a little bit more transparent here. This is a company that I praised just recently that they really have done nothing wrong, and I'm not saying they have yet, but I'm saying this is the opportunity for them to slip if they're just a little bit messy with this and not being um, informative to their fan base. So I, I do have to say this, and you guys can let me know if I'm boldly wrong on this. CD Projekt Red has had one major success. Are Witcher you? 3. Have, Witcher 1 and 2 weren't some sort of critical success that everyone loved or financial success. They were, they were more low-key PC games, right? True, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and again, this I'm not being disrespectful to the success of The Witcher 3, but what I wonder is, did the success of one game raise everyone's expectations of what this studio is capable of beyond reason is everyone like oh cd project red can do no wrong it's a very small sample size well i mean i guess but they did make witcher 3 wild hunt hearts of stone and witcher 3 wild hunt blood and wine yeah those are dlc Blood and Wine, I believe, was actually bigger than the original yeah, it games. It's, but it's, it's still like it's still Witcher Three. Fine, Gwent, the Witcher card game. Still Witcher Three. It's a different. Th- fine, Thornbreaker. 
The Witcher Tales. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and again, it just, it just, I, I, I've never played a Witcher game, but everyone's like, oh, Sadie Project Red. Like, I'm sure they're great, but we are seeing evidence here from a six month delay that maybe they bit off more they can chew. Maybe they over promised. Uh, you know, I just, I just, I've always thought the sample size for the amount of praise that they get from one success seemed a little crazy to me. I think as a company, um, I think that they, yeah, because they put a lot of pressure on themselves. They they're holding themselves at this high standard to put out the best product that they can for us as a consumer. So they don't want to let us down. So I think it's a little bit of both of what you're saying um, and the work that they're putting on themselves. But they're ju- they're holding themselves to this standard. They don't want to d- disappoint us. Yeah. I mean, I, I would hope so. Now, I'm not saying this to be disrespectful. I, th- I think it's the fan hype is a little out of control for a studio that's had one major su- excuse me, one major success. I mean, it's one major success that just happens to be looked at, looked upon as arguably one of the greatest games ever made in the existence of video games. Yeah. So, I mean, if this was the company that would have made Breath of the Wild and you would have loved Breath of the Wild as much as you did today, you would hold them at a high level. You've never played The Witcher. You don't have any connection yeah. to The Witcher. Someone like BMC, you know, here in our community, um, would have to put 250, 300 hours into the game has a very different look on what The Witcher 3 is to the, to him in the in his his world of gaming, his his whole career of gaming, however you want to call it. So I mean, yeah, it's one game, but it only takes one game for you to all of a sudden have the spotlights on you and expect, okay, you won game of the year. You won all these awards. How are you going to respond? And you this is right now you're right. This is where a company either crumbles or steps up and shows that they are going to be a giant in this industry and for years to come create games that that matter. And so we've seen this before in you can pick out all sorts of stuff from Mass Effect and watching a young BioWare start to do things with Mass Effect and and watch it kind of watch that franchise kind of fall apart. You've watched Dragon Age, you know, again, but I'm 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 picking on BioWare right now. You've watched Anthem like here's a here's a that's a company that you thought could do no wrong. Mm-hmm. They were bulletproof. They made games that we loved. I mean, hell, they're about to remake an HD version of of Mass Effect and and people are still excited about it even with all the problems that they've had. So, my whole point is there's two different views here. You could be BioWare that releases game after game that did really well, and then you, the next four games that you release are complete trash, and now you're looked at as a joke. You could be that company that's a that's a you know one hit wonder that comes out and drops a game like I don't know what, what's a game. This isn't this isn't proof true, okay? Because I don't know what their next game is. But the company that made Journey, mm-hmm. an indie game that took the, that took game, like game like went up for game of the year, won all these awards and everything, and then like we haven't really heard a whole lot about this company ever since after that. So like you know it's. Uh, CD Projekt Red's right there. They're in that mix right now. And now, 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 Cyberpunk 2077 has built so much hype, has built so much excitement, and everybody wants to play it. That this is that game that defines this company. And a six-month um, push is whatever. Like if the game comes out and it's and it's better than The Witcher or it's good as The Witcher or whatever, um, no one's gonna care. But it's the fact of the matter that we need to know a little bit more of what's going on, and we have to make sure that in six months, this isn't just a mess, and they actually like needed a year. They actually needed a lot more time, and they're just crunching nonstop. It'll be interesting to see if any employees kind of flake out, go sideways, and start hitting social media with like, oh yeah, I was logging, you know, 100, 200 hours a month or whatever, something crazy. And, uh, you know, like, that's... You know, we'll see what happens, but for me, I'm not mad about it. It is a big blow because it was an early release for the year that definitely had my attention. That was gonna, I was gonna put some time into, and now it's getting pushed into a tail end, which scares me because let's talk about the last game that did that that I can think of, and that would have been Borderlands. Right when the PS4 came out, they released a Borderlands game, which was a pre-sequel on the PS3. You wanted to play it, and I want all I want to do is play my PS4. So now if you're telling me you're getting close to that release of that new system and you're not going to have the ability to properly play it on the new system, that's going to be a problem. Now, backwards compatibility comes into play, I can, you know, and, it, and, that, and it is one of the games that is backwards compatible and I can play it, then maybe I keep playing it. But, if you're t- but again, if I have the brand new Halo 
and it's optimized for 4K and 120 frames, and I can push I can push my brand new system to the limits with it. Versus me throwing a you know an older disc in there, and I'm not going to optimize. It's going to unfortunately just because of the new hardware and the new allure of what's going on. I'm going to it's going to pull me away from the game a little bit. At least initially, and then when the shine wears off the system, then I'm like, all right, cool, I'm going to go back to Cyberpunk. But we'll see. Yeah, and, th- and that's a maybe. because So for anyone that is not immediately ready to jump to the next generation, Cyberpunk is going to be a really nice swan song of sorts. And I think we are going to find that the way this generation is going to evolve, uh, Microsoft's already been really clear about this isn't going to be a hard stop cut over like old generations of going to be there's going to be some fluidity and compatibility between new titles being released for series x and titles that will be available on your one s and one x so the, and so it, a lot of it may come down to what sony going to do is that going to be true for sony as well i would i really have to think this is this game is being optimized for next gen and and it's it's being released at that time to bridge the gap they're going to say start your file here on your playstation 4 or xbox one and continue with these day one 4K improvements on Series X and PS5. Yeah, and Sneezy Attic over on Mixer.com slash GameZone Media brought up a good point, is that uh, CD Projekt Red could make another great game called Cyberpunk, but there's so much hype because of The Witcher 3 that people will hate on Cyberpunk no matter what. And so that's the, and then his following statement is, don't forget that even though The Witcher was great, its fight mechanics and camera controls were kind of wonky. So it's things like that that if I go into the new game and I feel the same way, mm-hmm. you know, oh, the camera controls are, are like, oh, this is just CD Projekt Red. Like, their camera controls are a little funky. Their, mecha- their fighting mechanics are just a little weird. It, it, then you start to look at things like Bethesda. Okay, well, how many generations of Bethesda's use the same engine and we have the same problems? You go look at Grand Theft Auto. Every time that Rockstar would go push out a game, people would be like, oh, my God. They're still running on this, you know, this engine doing these things. It drives me nuts. But to that point, Sneezy Attic, look at GTA V, a game that would have received some of that hate because of it can being compared to GTA 4, and look at what it's been able to do. If the game's good and the support's good and, and the developer and publisher behind it keep feeding it, um, yeah, you're going to get those people that are going to hate on it to hate on it, but you're going to get the millions upon millions that play it every day. And some of those people that hate on it every day also play it every day. So, you know, you're not going to make everybody happy, but it is it is an interesting thought. Ugh. All right. Well, as a reminder, if you want to talk more about this, you want to you're upset about the delays or we missed a delay that you're more you're more upset about than even C- uh, Cyberpunk 2077, then chime in on the discord you can either click on that link live on mixer every monday night right now mixer.com email media or if you're listening to this on itunes stitcher spotify google Podcasts, wherever it is you listen to your podcast head on over to gameslomedia.com click on the community tab and join the discord today all right topic number two this one is special for uh this one's real special this one's real special for 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 butter boy over there i brought up this topic as like a, do we want to talk about this and <laughs> and then butter boy hadn't heard about it and so i explained it to him a little bit and he was he started to yell he started to like lose it and i'm like hey hey hey, do what you i'm gonna tell you what you always tell me save it for the show he hit yeah. me so, yeah, he struck miggy physically Apex Legends player takes over Airport TV to play ranked match. Get him. Idiot. An actual Apex Legends plugged <laughs> Apex Legends player plugged his PlayStation 4 into a TV at a Portland International Airport on Thursday to play the game Apex Legends. Um, let's see here. This was uh, according to Oregon Live, and this is via Kotaku. The the man can commandeered a TV that was displaying a map of the airport. Security officials walked over and asked the traveler to stop playing. And uh, they, uh, <laughs> so the man very politely asked if he could finish his game first. Security denied his request, and the man stopped his game. 
Uh, according, apparently, it was a very polite and cordial interaction, um, according to security here. But yeah, um, <laughs> they show a picture, which you can see if you're watching us live right now, of, of the actual incident of this guy that literally just plugged his PS4 into the ground and plugged it, jacked it into a TV that was on a rack of monitors. Uh, yeah. What were your thoughts on this? If I <laughs> were to miss my flight because I couldn't find a map, like I get to the, I like get lost in the airport after I'd walked by this area and then the gates close and I don't make it to my flight, I would promptly have turned around full on fast as I could run sprinted, leap through the air, heel first and booted this dumbass in the side of his head. Like, what is like, how inconsiderate are you to take over a TV at the airport that has information for people to get around so you can play your stupid game? Play a game on your phone or something, you idiot! I would be so mad if this inconvenienced me in any sort of way because this guy took away helpful public information for people that are traveling, which is important so you can play Apex Legends. Get a laptop! Play it there! I, I seriously, I would have pulled out my little, like, travel pillow, and I would have choked, choked the life out of this man if I missed a flight because of him. So, the, the interesting part of this is, first of all, okay, you pull your, you, you unpack your PS4, you find, a, you find a power outlet, plug it in, take that HDMI cord, you, you throw it in the back of this monitor, okay? You know what? Shame on the airport for not blocking those ports somehow. Like, build, build like, a metal wall behind it or something so people can't access it. I don't know. But the best part is that the dude's playing a ranked match, ranked mode of Apex Legends off of, I just want to know, what internet connection? They just got open Wi-Fi at the Portland airport. Is it, is it public Wi-Fi? Is it his hotspot? Because I tell you what, either one of those for ranked matches probably isn't going to do very well for you. And, uh, like, what, I guess to me, what a wiener. I have never walked through a public, <laughs> a public, like, building and assumed that I could just, oh, that's for you right there on Mixer. Yeah, that yeah, that's what you would do with a little more running. Though is really correct. But I've never walked through a public establishment and just looked at a piece of electronic and be like, "Oh yeah, I can use this without asking." Like, yeah, I'm just going to commandeer this for my own my own needs. It would end up just like the time Chris Jericho threw Shawn Michaels through a TV. I would grab that guy and just throw his face forward through that TV and blind him. Oh, now, mind you, this was we like... We have a ladder match in three months this, after that. This was like three in the morning at the airport. I see. I don't have any patience for for BS okay. at 3 a.m. Good, good. I'm just, I just want anybody to be like, oh, well, it was only at three in the morning, so no one was there. Like, I don't care. It's still not okay. It's still not right. It's still not good. And also, like, I don't think, I think many people know this now, but you can buy portable screens. You know that, right? Like, if you are that addicted to Apex Legends that you're at the airport, and you're like, man, I need to pull my PS4 out right now, commandeer a map. Okay, here's the thing. It had to, it showed the fucking map of the airport on the screen before he unplugged it. <laughs> Wouldn't that, like, register in your brain be like, people might need this information. <laughs> That's just my thought. Like, It'd be different, I guess, if it was like all those monitors were off. Yeah. And yeah, I was like, like, all right, well, I'm just going to like jump in there. But like uh, someone's comment, too, that I loved in, in the uh, comments here. We're reading the article from IGN, but uh, it was in the comments I saw. Someone's like, man, ma yeah, that, that's pretty dumb. But imagine hooking up a, hooking up a switch and playing Ikaruga on one of those vertical monitors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, li I like that they, they knew right away. They're like, yeah, yeah it's going to have vertical Ikaruga going. I was like, damn, that would be really nice. Like, the, okay, uh, what I really need to know, because, again, I hate this person. Uh, but what I need to know is, was this flight delayed? Had he been in the, is, is this like terminal? Had he been living in this <laughs> airport? Had he been there for, <laughs> he's been in the airport for a damn week, stranded in Portland, Oregon. And he's like, I just got a game. It, I've been, it's been a week. I need to get back to my country, and I live in the airport now. I've been eating, uh, I've been eating Cinnabon for a week. I'm all sugared up. I, I need to play games. But we're also talking about an airport, an international airport. Like the, that's the one place that, like, 
I clench my butthole and I do everything I'm told because I want to get on my airplane and either get to my destination <laughs> or get home. If they tell me to take all my clothes off, I take all my clothes off because I want to get on the airplane. <laughs> like, that's where I'm at with this. So to me, it's like, I kind of want to, um, I can't, I would, if we could get this guy's name, like, it'd be amazing to <laughs> interview him and be like, what was your thought process? What went down in your head when you decided to do this? And how did you, as, as Sneezy Attic said in the chat here, how did you access this TV with, like, no one noticing? Because I feel like you leave a bag unattended for 30 seconds, it gets reported as a bomb half the time. Like, how do you go start messing with cords and hookups and stuff and power outlets and and you you get into a ranked game and you're playing before security comes along and says, "Oh, uh, you can't do that." What 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 baffles my mind is you would think some security guard would be like, "We're being hacked. We're being hacked by the Russians." <laughs> and before you know it, there's two like airport police tasing him in the butthole. Like terrorists, <laughs> terrorism. <laughs> like how like how would someone not be like, "We're, we're being hacked be, by the Russians"? That escalated quickly. That's what that's what airport security's like, man. See, like if someone came, if I had first of all if I was dumb enough to do this right. And security came up to me and said, uh, you need to stop that right now and unplug that. The last thing that would have came out of my mouth is, okay, but can I finish up this <laughs> round? Because I feel like if I would have asked that question, I would have ended up like in tased. airport prison. You would have been tased, right? Yeah. In the butthole. Oh, yeah, yeah. Butthole tased and locked up. And then, you know, my wife would have been come picking I, me up. I've always believed that. Hopefully. Well, that Hopefully. Airport, <laughs> the airport have like Loki, like Gitmo style uh, prisons underneath them where they can hold people and yeah. torture them to get information. That's what I've always assumed. Yeah. That's why I act right in the airport. Now, Sneezy and I, we go to some PAX conventions together. So, like, he's saying right now, when we go to, like, PAX West this September, we're going to get to the airport and we're going to hear an announcement that says, please do not hook any video game consoles up to any of our monitors or you will be detained. <laughs> anally tased. <laughs> yeah, not detained. You'll be anally tased. <laughs> And sent home. You still you won't be flying to your destination. Oh, Here's man. what the genius thing you do though. You do air was it uh do flight sim. Yeah, you hook up your PlayStation or, or Terrace, Xbox, man. <laughs> and you play and you go ahead and you play that uh, flight sim oh, and people man. be you know, sit there and they're watching, they're thinking that's actual flight that's going going through and then when you crash the plane freak out a bunch of people yeah terrorism that's that's terrorism mickey you're emotionally terrorizing the patrons of the airport and i won't stand for it well they're emotionally terrorizing me by 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 delaying my flight for the 17th time <laughs> mickey i'll speak flippantly about a lot of matters but not about causing havoc in an airport unless it involves assaulting a man who stole a monitor <laughs> <laughs> airports are serious business <laughs> Oh man, this one. <laughs> this man is a criminal. Smooth He's criminal. endangered people's lives. <laughs> okay. He stole electricity from the airport. I respect this guy. Check you us were... out on Mixer.com. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. Uh, third. You can't chill with the butter boy. <laughs> what if we get him on an interview, though? You're going to have to interview him. I'll be like, you're a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> like, why would you do that? Oh, find this man. I need to make this happen. Patreon special. Man, it was that ranked match was really important. He's, no, he's, it wasn't. He was about to hit like gold level, probably, maybe not, higher. Not now with the ping, he'd be getting off that hot. That's spot. what I'm saying, <laughs> man. Uh. The ping had to be awful. That's that's why I want to interview him. I want to know how bad his connection was. Look <laughs> at his stupid salmon color shirt. <laughs> what a dumb color to wear. <laughs> Detain him just for that. Oh, God. Oh, I man. have that color shirt. I like that you and I both were like, nope, we good. <laughs> that was like the time in, in college I was like, Kiss is the worst band ever. People, like, Kiss fans are idiots. And I'm talking to this group of people, and this guy I don't like goes, I'm wearing a Kiss belt buckle right now. I was like, that's my point. You're a moron. <laughs> Like, like, don't don't bring that up when I'm just when I'm talking about. It. Yeah, same thing. I'm glad you guys checked to make sure you weren't wearing salmon color shirt. We're just trying to look out for our own well being before before Butter Boy just rips us I, a new right. one. I'm I'm in a hot buttery rage today. That's right. <sighs> Hard stop horrific. <sighs> okay, next topic. I'm neck, I, my my neck hurts, and I'm taking it out on strangers on the internet. That's right, and then there's shirts that they're wearing. <laughs> Get it together. That is not a good color anymore. <laughs> Next topic. Oh, I let me show you this real is quick. Is he wearing a collared shirt under a polo? What is about, that what, what I'm about seeing? This? Man, just 
It's just part of your phone. Okay, I'm okay. Yeah. It's a, if you come to work with a salmon-colored shirt on tomorrow, I'll probably defecate on your desk chair. <laughs> <laughs> could, you see, could you see him sitting full what? squat on your desk like a squirrel? Oh, yeah. When you walk in. The sad part is I totally could, yes. I know he would do it. The guys he shares a cubicle area with wouldn't say a thing. That's, you're right, you're right. They would wait to watch my reaction and then be like, Ethan did it. They'd still throw you under the bus, but they'd want to see me deal with it first. Oh All right, next Thanks. topic. <laughs> Elder Scrolls Six could be heading into full production as Bethesda begins a hiring spree. Uh, new job listings have led Elder Scrolls fans to believe Bethesda has nearly finished development on Starfield. So Starfield sci-fi RPG that they've talked about is supposed to be coming before Elder Scrolls 6. The fact that we're seeing a... Um, a Do you think they just scrapped it after man. after Outer Worlds? They're like, man. they're like, man, Outer Worlds was super good. Maybe we just shouldn't put out Starfield. Yeah, that would be that'd be brutal. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, newly discovered vacancies posted on the developer's website has led fans to believe they're finishing up work on the upcoming sci-fi RPG Starfield and finally moving into the next installment in the acclaimed fantasy series of Elder Scrolls. Uh, first spotted by a user on Reddit, Bethesda Game Studios is hiring for a number of programmers to push the bleeding edge of RPG development for the PC and console uh, and assist with the implementation of new gameplay features, player and character behaviors, combat and power mechanics, user interface, and so on. Um, in addition, the studio is also recruiting a video editor to create trailers for its games implying that Starfield is almost ready to be unveiled to the world with a full marketing campaign, TV spot, and all. Putting the two together, it sounds like Bethesda has almost completed development on Starfield and is ready to begin full-time work on Elder Scrolls Six, or at least that's what the fans are hoping for. Uh, of course, the studio has not said anything, and we'll be sitting here. We haven't seen um, either game. We haven't seen either game since the first reveal uh, as a next as next gen project at E3 2018. So, what do you guys think? Um, do you care anymore? Or no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Obviously, Elder Scrolls is Six is important to some people, like my wife, but Starfield almost being done almost seems fake to me because like literally the only thing we saw two years ago was a starry sky and like it panned out and i think we saw like an edge of a, of a planet and then that was it and then the word starfield and then that's all i've heard about that project since and we're in 2020 and now the people are like well it's probably done so we're just gonna wait and see it's real tough because if we were to draw venn diagrams of Bethesda games I care about and games I will be excited about and actually play. The only thing that's in that middle area where the circles overlap is id property. So Wolfenstein and Doom. <laughs> like, I, I've never played an Elder Scrolls game. It doesn't appeal to me. The only reason I would be excited about an Elder Scrolls game is is really only to come over here once a week and talk to your wife about it because I know it's her favorite yeah. game. Skyrim's her favorite game. So I know there's people that love the games. I have nothing against them, but they draws no excitement to me. And honestly, I don't know what you could show me about Starfield that would make me think, oh, this is when I want to play a Bethesda RPG opposed to just playing Outer Worlds, which is really good. I mean, Starfield is intriguing because it is a sci-fi RPG. It's not. It's it's different than Elder Scrolls. It's 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 you know you you kind of wonder what it's going to be because it's a new IP that that we've never seen before. So, of course, that doesn't that could that could also lead you in the direction of say Anthem, <laughs> in that same way. So you got Outer Worlds and you have Anthem. It can go one way or the other. I mean, I'd say those are like the polar opposites right there of each other. Like. You're either gonna, you can either pull something off that's close to out, to Outer Worlds, which w is rare, or you can have a dumpster fire because nothing's ready. You rushed everything, your engine's garbage, and all that crap. Anthem. So for me, I'm with Craig WK, who literally just said in the chat, I didn't even remember that Starfield was a thing. I read this article when we picked it, and I was like, oh yeah, um, it, you know, Elder Scrolls Six. They're gonna start developing it. 
never even thinking that that means that the sci-fi RPG Starfield is finally moving into production, probably, or, or probably completed. Didn't even phase me. Didn't even come across my thought until I until I actually read the article more. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that is a game that they were working on, I think. Maybe. Next fo follow question. Does anyone even like Bethesda anymore? <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Yeah. I don't they were a studio that just had so much hype. Like six years ago, like everything they did had excitement, and now everyone's like, "Oh, time for another buggy mess that won't be that great." Well, again, when we were coming off of Fallout seventy six, a complete and utter disaster for them, that they're still trying to support and still trying to like make better, and it's like I, I give you credit for sticking with something, but it's like you're never like. It's already done. Like, it's already over. Like, you, it never it never started <laughs> that game. So, like, for me, it's like, how much resources are you actually putting into that? Because, to me, it's almost a waste. They're putting much resources into it. <laughs> yeah. And, Mig and Miggy being one of the people that has stuck around the longest to try to have hope for, for something has even left and, and moved on with their lives, I'd say, for the most part. Yeah, I'm trying not to go on a dead eye size rant over that game. But <laughs> I don't... I'm very leery now about anything with the Bethesda name on it. Um, I'm going to wait, and I hope that they do the smart thing and get out like, like I don't know, like like test copies to like a lot of the big names because it's on us uh, here, at Gamezilla Studios. But um, just to get it in the hands and to have people test it, so we can get reviews out ahead of time and get the feedback, so you can start winning back some of our trust. So these games that come out, they better be beautiful. They better have minimal bugs. None of this same, you know, garbage that we kept seeing game after game after game. They got it. They they got to put everything into these games coming out. Yeah, and they have to show off their new engine. As Button Master mm -hmm. Caleb saying in the chat, I have played probably 500 to 700 hours of Bethesda RPGs, but the industry has passed them by. The competition is better right now. That is just true. And, and when we make that statement, we're stating their, their current list of games that are live, running off of their archaic engine that need to be replaced last generation. It just It just is time for them to show us what Starfield's going to be and show off this new engine and show us all these enhancements that they're about to make and how it's going to, you know, bring them back to relevancy within the R within the video game world, period. I don't care what game it is, like, be it an RPG, be it, um, you know, anything else that they're, that they're working on within the Bethesda umbrella. So, I don't know. I, um, I'm intrigued, especially, but, like, you have to think about it. What it makes sense because E three is not that far off, and if and when, when E three hits, they have to have something to talk about. And like, if you think of Bethesda, what else would they have to talk about besides Starfield? And then at least saying Elder Scrolls Six in development. Like, what else do they really have to talk about? Doom Two will in theory be out, correct? Yeah. So the switch port may still be pending, but yeah. Doom Eternal should be out at that. So point. they could talk about like some DLC or something that maybe is around the corner. Of course, they're going to drop maybe like the next DLC for Elder Scrolls Online, and and what? Skyrim coming to a smartwatch near you. Yeah, exactly. So for me, <laughs> it's like TI eighty three plus Starfield <laughs> has to be there, and it has to be a real trailer with real gameplay. And honestly. If they drop it and it looks awesome, Bethesda instantly gets thrown. Like, this is the thing about Bethesda. You may not trust them right now. You may be mad at them right now. But they throw one project in front of you that looks unique, that looks cool, and you just fly back into all the great memories you have of Bethesda games, and you're going. they're going to literally climb back on top of their pedestal before you know it. Now, part of it is it has to look good and play good, right? Mm -hmm. So... Yes, there's still that concept of Miggy where he's like, I'm going to wait. But if that game comes out and day one, day two, day three, you're reading the reviews of people are like, oh, my God, Bethesda finally figured it out. How quick are you running out and buying the game? It's, it, for me, it's instantly. Mm -hmm. For me, it's never. And But for me, it's instantly because Elder Scrolls is great, and, I, and I've enjoyed Oblivion, I enjoyed Morrowind, um, and I enjoyed Skyrim. But, again, now you're going to give me a sci-fi RPG that, that you know, if if it is great, like you've just 
just I've just spiked my interest like from where I'm like a five six when it comes to Elder Scrolls. I'm like a nine ten when it, when you add sci fi. That's why Cyberpunk was so exciting to yeah. me versus Witcher three. So um, yeah, I don't know. That's where I'm at right now. They have to be ready to show a giant chunk of Starfield. And they've done such a good job of keeping it where literally we saw that one trailer and that was it for the last two years. That could we be in store for something like Fallout 4's announcement back in the day when we were like sitting there like, huh, I wonder what Bethesda's going to talk about. And they were like, here's Fallout 4. And we were like, what? And they're like, oh, yeah, and it comes out in two months. And we were like, I mean, that was one of the most shocking announcements that I can remember in the last, like, I don't know, 10 years of watching um, E3s and, and, and conventions and all that stuff. It was just unheard of for someone to drop a AAA game of that, like, caliber and then say, oh, yeah, October. And they hit their, and they hit that release date. There wasn't a delay. There wasn't these, all this crap that's going on now. So they do something like that with a brand new franchise around Starfield and it's good. Uh, but that is in great shape. They fumble I, it, then they're in trouble. Big I could time. see it being a launch title for the new. new yeah, systems. man, that would be huge. That'd, that'd be big, and especially if it was a situation, you know, I know Xbox said there's going to be some fluidity, um, at least with their first party titles. If if they, Bethesda were to come out and say, "Hey, this game is truly a next generation game," that would those could that could be a system seller for sure. Yeah, that that's true. That'd be really big. I almost feel like it's almost too big of a game to be a launch title though bethesda wants to maximize the amount of money on this new ip they would probably make more money by it being again a swan song that install base is massive between the xbox one and the playstation 4 they can sell millions of copies we don't know about the ps5 yet but let's just say every game that's coming out on xbox will work on an Xbox One from first party, but they've also, Xbox has come on and said that third parties don't have to follow that, but they didn't say they can't follow it. Yeah. So now Bethesda comes out and says, oh yeah, here it is, ready for the Xbox Series X. It'll play on your Xbox One. It'll play on your PS4 or your PS5 and PC. Then, you, then yeah, you're ready to rock. Mad, I mean, mad sales. You're ready mad to sales. basically break records at that point. Think about uh, how your wife would lose her entire life if it was available on xCloud day one yeah it'd be game over I mean <laughs> I wouldn't be able to find any of my Xbox controllers she'd literally be taking them all to work just in case batteries died alright the other part of this story is that Elder Scrolls 6 may have been um, not necessarily leaked these were just job listings that started to show people but but another 6th edition of a video game got got uh Potentially leaked because of a British tax relief loophole. Oh, Bubsy 6 is finally coming out? You got it. Grand Theft Auto 6 possibly oh. leaked. <laughs> Rockstar North, the British developer renowned for creating the Grand Theft Auto series, may have just confirmed it's working on the next series in its uh, in its open world crime franchise, GTA 6, thanks to a detail found in the company's recently published tax returns. Uh, as outlined by Tax Watch UK, Rockstar North filed for... Do I, you know what? I find it interesting there's all these weird companies out there that literally just analyze everybody's shit. Like, hey, here's uh, Tax Watch UK that just sits there and pays attention to uh, what other, other people are doing with their tax returns. And just nonstop, there's all these little groups that that's all they do. Oh, well, uh, you know, because of Indeed.com, we found out that, uh, you know, Bethesda's making this video game. Like, everyone looks in such weird directions now for just a little hint of a possible rumor of a possibility so they can make an article. It's amazing to me. My wife put my cans of G Fuel somewhere a couple months ago, and I haven't even found those in my own house let alone finding out information about what developers <laughs> like, have going on. I was like, where are we going with this one? But okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. I'm bad at finding things. Yeah. That's where we're going. Um, I was talking to a guy on Grindr. He had some uh, some uh, some details about the next Pokemon game coming out to Switch. So I got to go meet him right after the show. So. Yeah, you know, <laughs> listen to that next week. You know, maybe why, like, why don't you bail? Why don't you bail right now and see what that gentleman from Grinder did you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is that is that a new app? I, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's just I was, I was trying to look. look you ever heard of Grinder before? It was a joke. I know. Okay, you <laughs> yeah, do you know what Grinder is because you have an account on there. <laughs> okay, Butter just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah, Butterboy. They, they call me Butterboy for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, <Yeah>. right. <laughs> 
As outlined by Tax Watch UK, Rockstar North filed for a significant increase in its claims for video games tax relief with HMRC in the UK for 2018-2019. The claims were approved on the basis that its ongoing project is registered as culturally British. A historic tax. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I wish I could get tax like credits. I'm like, hey, like I'm working on something in my basement. It's super American. Like I'm I'm gluing. I got rainbow macaroni that I've red, white, and blue. I'm cooking it to a I got plate. glitter up the wazoo. <laughs> it's super American. Red, like, white, and blue. I I am I am biting potato chips to look like bald eagles. It's super American. <laughs> Please do not charge me taxes. It's super. I'm being very free in my basement. <laughs> this is a tax law that allows video game developers to seek large subsidies for high cost productions with cultural ties to the UK. Uh, interestingly enough, the a trusted rock star insider <laughs> has also recently claimed that Take Two Interactive, that's your favorite group there, uh, the studio publisher has what did Take been. Take Two do pushing for a faster and more frequent... Oh, no, not Take-Two. I'm thinking 2K. My oh, bad. okay. Take-Two Interactive, the studio's publisher, has been pushing for a faster, more frequent game release schedule, implying that GTA 6 could be coming as soon as GTA 5's Trevor Phillips himself has suggested. There you go. Um, with both PS5 and Xbox Series X primed and ready for release later this year, the concept of a next-gen GTA is certainly enough to dream about for now. But in the meantime, be sure to follow Game, Star Game Radar as we're reading this. And, um, yeah. Oh, there's a correction. What's this? Mm. Oh, nope. Never mind. That's all good. It's just another uh, another culturally British um, filing that they, that they posted. <laughs> I love that. I, I want to... <laughs> I don't know what taxes are like in Britain, but I know what they're like here, so... I'm considering uh, going across the pond to just make some British stuff. <laughs> I'm drawing stick <laughs> figures of the Beatles. It's culturally significant to Britain. Please don't tax me. Blimey. Give me money. Anyways. <laughs> Charter Miss Bogart. So this is the next. This is the other leak here. That the Grand Theft Auto 6. This could be. A, this is that next thing where we talked about. Could we at E3 get an, a big announcement from Rockstar then again, like you're saying, imagine a you know let's let's move away from Starfield. Let, imagine a Grand Theft Auto <laughs> launch, Grand Theft Auto Six at launch. Yeah, and what if the new city play. was like in London? Like they're saying it's culturally significant or whatever to Britain. Like yeah. what if it was a London esque, yeah, city? That'd be cool. It'd be a cool change of pace away from Liberty City or wherever yeah. it takes place now. But you have a full like, and then on top of it, you could have full. Um, cross-play enabled day one. Yeah. Imagine the sales. We're about to see records just shattered, I think, coming up here because of this um, cross-play, cross-generation, this new this new thing that we're... I don't know if we technically have a definition for it yet, but cross-gen gameplay. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, it's going to be... It, it will unite the rich and the poor gamers. <laughs> It will be a bridge, an economic bridge. It used to be poor people just left behind. And cheap people like me left behind. Not anymore. My day has come. I've never really gotten into Grand Theft Auto, but Grand Theft Auto 6 would probably be where I would do it. Like, I've really thought about trying to jump into Grand Theft Auto 5. I keep thinking about it, and I don't. It's on Game Pass, isn't it? It is on Game Pass. I have it downloaded, but I just I can't, I can't invest into it right now with me wanting to finish Star Wars, with me, like, getting ready for Cyberpunk. Oh, getting ready for Marvel. Oh, getting got, ready for Dying Light. Oh. You got nothing to do. I got nothing anymore. You're oh, not going to play Minecraft with Miggy. I'll play Minecraft Dungeons, though. That comes out soon, supposedly. <laughs> for now, it does. <laughs> right, Miggy? Right? Don't leave me hanging, man. I think so. I don't, I don't know a hard <laughs> date, but... Uh, I think yeah, it's, I think it's, it's early. It's supposed to be like delayed. March. I think it's, yeah, exactly. That was what I was getting at. But anyways... um. Yeah, I don't know. I, I like. I'm excited to hear more about Starfield. Grand Theft Auto Six might be that game where I'm like, okay, let's see. Let me get into this. Like, people have really loved this. You know, this online. Like, I mean, they've loved the franchise, but like, especially recently when they moved it to an online and kind of built it into this ever-growing, evolving game where people are even like turning. And I don't. They call it RP um, Grand Theft Auto. I don't. I don't know what it really 
what it is, but where people like log in to do the online stuff, but they just like play a role. It's role role playing Grand Theft Auto. Yep. And so like somebody is like, I'm gonna play a hooker, and they literally sign in, and then every stream they just play a hooker in a parking lot. What? Yeah, and they just spend hours upon hours. Like, they walk up to a car, and they're like, hey, baby, what's going on? And then, like, the person rolls down the car, and the guy in the car is playing a role of, like, a gangster. He's like, hey, mama, want to go for a ride? And then, like, they like, and they just they just act like it's, like, second life. They just act like it's a real-world thing. And, like, he's like the other guy be like, yeah, man, ended up in jail, had to get out, blah, blah, blah. And then, like, the cops show up. He's like, oh, man, it wasn't me. It was this guy over here that stole your shovel. And then, like, they beat him up and take him to, like, it's weird. It's really weird that people are into this. And it's also strange that I've actually watched it and, and gotten, like, hooked on it where I'm like, why am I, why am I watching this? But then I watch it. Grim, you're... You shouldn't be watching hookers on the internet. That's dirty. I mean, I watch the cops mostly because they're, they're dirty. Dirty cops. I guess it's GTA. Everything's dirty. Yeah, everything's dirty in GTA. <laughs> There's one. There could be one person playing as a pelican, just flying yeah. around scooping up fish, yeah. and somehow it'd be filthy and riddled with. No, crime. the one I like to watch the most is um is an ex cop who now is like a gangster in RP. In, uh, is this person a real life ex cop? Yes. Okay. But he's in playing. the real world. They yeah. used to be a police officer. Correct. They retired. And now they're playing like a gangster in in role playing Grand Theft Auto, and so it's just it's amusing to watch this like this this dude that would be interesting who you scroll down in his description and he has all of his like photos of him with like canine dogs and in his uniform and all that stuff. But anyways, like it's weird. I can't imagine like I would watch a ton more of it, but like it's gotten it sparked my interest from like. I should probably check this game out more, like, and figure out what 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 this is all about. I know Miggy just recently got back into it. Mm-hmm, just for blue. Are you gonna do um, role playing Grand Theft Auto soon? So if I can get Craig WK to join along with me, with we we could do like how many characters? I mean, with all the voices that we have trapped in our heads, I think that could be an entertaining stream. What what would you play though? Like, what would you want to be? What would I want to be? Hmm. I'd probably want to be like the most like pathetic kind of guy on there that, that's a terrified or anything, because you know just 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 walk home like oh what was it what was it what was that a pigeon oh I don't I don't, I don't, I don't know I'm just gotta go home and things just happen. I would I would want to run a crooked pawn shop. <laughs> that's what I would I would want people to come sell me things and when you'd and, be like that guy from Parks and Rec oh. like oh oh you need a ring sure that's in the ring and nails box <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. careful there's some rusty nails in there yeah and then when someone tries to like rob me or whatever I just murder him I'm real quick to murder my customers oh, wow <laughs> but I'm always snitching Craig. I'm always snitching to the cops <laughs> Craig WK <laughs> get away with the murder. my choice is easy serial killer <laughs> <laughs> wow, dark. Damn. That says something about Craig. Ugh. Okay, well, um, interesting. <laughs> inter- I'm, I kind of regret asking Craig, what that question. What would you do? I kind of regret asking that question. Mickey's going to be afraid of everything. I'm going to be a crooked pawn shop owner. What, what, what would you do in the world of Grand Theft Auto? Man, I kind of feel like I would either be... There's two things. I'd either be a... Because um, it's like... It's it, right now the way I'm watching it. It's in like a d- dirty city, right? Yeah, I got another so, idea too. I want, I want to just be that like underground bicycle delivery boy. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I like that. But like not your normal like here's your mail. It'd be like hey here's that body part that you you, you ordered uh, 20 minutes ago. That's it's right. still warm. Uh, <laughs> my my new dream. My new dream outside of being a crooked pawn shop owner is being like an Uber driver or a cab driver. But I'm also a vigilante, so I'm always picking up criminals, and then I murder them as soon as I let them out of my car. I'm always rolling up on the cops and also shooting at the criminals with the cops. <laughs> I get back in my car and just drive away. Yeah. I'm nervous when I'm trapped in the studio with. Yeah, you should be. Um, my other answer would be I'd be a hooker. Okay? But I'd be a wire. I'd be a, like a snitch. Yeah, yeah. So I'd be wired up, and then the idea, but, it, but I'm not, like, wired up with the police. I'm wired up with, like, the, the hottest... Um, um, TV show around right now. Yeah, where what was it? Love Boat that that guy got stabbed or whatever, right? Is that it? Back in the day, Love Boat. Yeah, that was like a, a scripted television program. Yeah. yeah, some dude got stabbed or whatever. On the Love Boat? Yeah, the host. 
Oh, wow. I can't remember what show that was. I don't think it was The Love Boat. Yeah, man. the host got stabbed, though. There was no it? host on The oh, Love Boat. Oh, that was... um. I know you're talking about, because there was a guy, he used to, like, uh, like pop up on people that were having affairs and stuff. Oh, yeah. cheaters? Cheaters, yeah. Cheaters, yeah. Uh, that guy got super yeah. stabbed. So think of that, but, like, what it is, like, I, <laughs> like the hooker has to get into the axe, yeah. but then right before the act goes down, she just, like, you know, burns him. See how long I can survive on that, because I, like I feel that. like I get murdered a lot. Yeah. But anyways. I guess we're all playing GTA now. Yeah, I'm in. Like, I'll, I would jump in online with you. I will reinstall it on my Xbox. And run you already you. uninstalled it? No, I have it. On, I own it on uh, PlayStation. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Well, we gotta be careful with your with your uh, data cap there. So. Oh no, I'm, I got Wow, baby. I'm, I'm good. Oh, did you make the switch? I made the you switch. You got no cap anymore? Wait, no ca- I am capless. Okay, we need to move on because you guys are rubbing in having real internet providers <laughs> instead of me just getting taken over a barrel by Spectrum every month. <laughs> Screw you, Spectrum. Get the oh, butter. Oh man. All right. So we're gonna move into our uh, last topic here. It's uh it's a feel good topic. Um it's something that I feel good for you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> this is a good topic. <laughs> <laughs> I promised I wouldn't do this. Yep, yep. Well anyways, uh a man has hand built a custom controller for his disabled daughter so that she can be able to play video games. Mm. I like it. And so this one this one uh, is cool because there's there's some technology and people involved that um we got to really get hands on and, and familiar with. Um, just last year at PAX West. So, uh, but anyways, Rory Steele said the Nintendo Switch controller was built for nine-year-old Ava with a Microsoft device and component uh, and components from eBay. Um, basically, the Microsoft device is the accessibility controller that we have, or adaptive controller that we've talked about uh, in the past. But um, this video basically got thrown up online. had something probably at this point now over a million views of Ava playing Breath of the Wild on the Nintendo Switch. And the controller is basically two joysticks, two like arcade sticks, and then, um, you know, like arcade buttons all around the edge of the controller. And so that allows um, Ava with her disability, which affects her motor control and speech, um, to, to be able to control the game. <laughs> Uh, unlike trying to use like a Joy-Con or some, or a traditional controller, so um, the teacher who Mr. Steele, head of the Digital Jersey Academy, built the device with two joysticks and arcade game style flashing buttons hooked up to the Microsoft Adaptive Controller. He said the controller was built in a weekend after some serious soldering and wire management. The um, the cool it goes on even beyond this is that um, let's see here. The younger brother, who also is dealing with the same uh, issue, motor skill, motor um, sk- control, and every and everything, also wants to play Breath of the Wild. So they both kind of worked on this project together with the other people that put it together, and including that, uh, they were they were reached out to um, some of Mr. Steele's tweets were reposted by Bryce Johnson, who is who we met at PAX West, founder of Microsoft's Inclusive Tech Lab and an inventor of the Xbox controller, uh, who also gave him some suggestions for the controller. So this is pretty cool because it um, takes an Xbox device that primarily was designed to be used with Xbox. It manipulates it away from Xbox, yet here's the founder of the device, the founder of of their tech lab, Reach, retweeting them and reaching out and giving some advice to them saying, hey, awesome job, because that's all that matters, Let's right? Go. Like so that. super cool. Um, the time we spent with them, you could tell that is that is definitely, you know, what this guy is all about and how he can take something and manipulate it to, to help more people is all that he cares about. So it was... Um, it's really cool. This controller looks really neat. It's 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 pretty special to see someone that was unable to play a game that they wanted to play, and now they can. You know, um, it's similar to the stories that that we talked about when we were in Seattle and got to, you know, play Rocket League with one with our legs and our neck, you know, no hands, and just understanding that people, you know, can do some extraordinary things and be, and we can break these walls down to allow gamers, you know, with whatever disability to still enjoy video games. And, you know, to me watching, um, a a new streamer on mixer nomad who plays Xbox with his face. 
Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's sweet. It's He's so good. He's, He's so, so good. good. So, I mean, like, it's things like that that really show people that are either, you know, f- are trying to overcome, uh, you know, a disability that maybe is new to them or they were born with something and, you know, it's a kid that's growing up and feeling like, oh, I'm left out of this circle. I'm never going to be able to do this. This is the stuff they get to see that can change their mind, that can pr- that can show them and help motivate them and make them realize that, honestly, the only thing that's going to stop you is yourself. And so, um, super cool. Again, there are there are probably at this point thousands of stories of how this adaptive controller has changed gaming for so many people. And I just every time I see them, I I love it. And this one really kind of um, blew up and, and got some got some headlines. And so we wanted to make sure that we had uh, at least a uh, an ending segment here, a positive segment to to talk about it. It is super cool. Yeah, it, we are all such big fans of video games. It hits all of us right in the heart when we think about the fact of that there are people that have a passion for video games and want to play, but physically it is a difficulty for them to be able to do that with the tools that are out there. So it's amazing to see the happiness on this little girl's face when she's able to play this game because I've played this game. I love this game. And it's so exciting to see a child getting to experience something that they want to experience and enjoying the happiness of playing video games. Cause every week we talk about video games and we can be negative. We can be really excited. We can, you know, we we cover a range of how we end up feeling about video games, and as a maybe slightly jaded adults, a lot of times I would say we lose sight of the fact that video games are supposed to be fun, and we want as many people as possible to be able to play and love video games the same way we do. So it's amazing to see what Microsoft's doing. I'm so happy for this little girl. It's so great that she has this, and we always love hearing these stories. So. Uh, anything we can do to encourage our fans, if there's anyone that likes the show that has, you know, trouble gaming, like any any way we can help, we'd love to help you. Yeah, and so the state, I kind of said the statement weird, but just to correct myself, the adaptive controller is made by Microsoft, and it does it does have Xbox like branding on it, but it has been shared with Sony, Nintendo, PC. Mm-hmm. And so there are some adapters that are required to make things work properly. But in all, in all in all, the idea of this device is to try to help as many people as possible, no matter what platform they're playing on. And that's that's the point. So, um, and Sneezy Attic corrected me in the chat there, so I wanted to make sure that I, exp- I corrected myself. So it is super cool. On top of that, if you like if you like this controller, if this is something that you find could be useful in in your life or or for somebody. Um, they said they will. They are planning to put up instructions online for people who want to build such devices. Um, after the request from parents of children with similar conditions uh, started to roll in, so keep an eye out because this is something that they're um, they're already kind of trying to tweak it to turn it into more of a wedge shape so that it's easier to uh, you know play on your lap or on a table and take up less space. But the idea is, however they built this and the steps and everything, they're going to release it. The release the instructions online, so. There you go, and that's the other thing about this about this whole like um, part of the industry is that everybody shares and everybody puts these things out there, and it's like if it can be three D printed, you you're you're gonna go find that model, and it's gonna be a free download, and it's gonna and you're gonna you know as long as you can follow some some simple steps, you're gonna be able to build something that you that you might need or that somebody needs, and so that the time I've spent at the um, at Microsoft and seeing these stories and everything, it, my my view on gaming has changed in a short six months is as i can i can sit there and look at and say wow not even six months actually wow it hasn't been that long but still i can sit back and just look at how gaming reaches people even even beyond what i thought like i've always talked about how gaming helped me in like a mental state but like it it, to see people that have overcome things and made the major league gaming platform and gotten MVP, you know, while they play video games with their face. It's like, I don't know. It's inspiring. But at the same time, when you first see it, you're like, Oh my God, how is that possible? And there they are doing it over and over and over again. You're like, wow. And they're better than me. <laughs> like, you know, like it's like, that's awesome. That's so awesome. So yeah, it's uh 
it's an amazing time. Hopefully, hopefully you guys can um, we'll we'll I'm sure be sharing some of these uh, the tweets and some of the videos and stuff about this. But take a take a look for yourself. Watch it. It's it's uh, it's awesome. All right, let's move into the Zilla update. Oh yeah. Oh. You okay? You okay, Miggy? What was that, Miggy? That sneeze? Or are you trying to like get in with the drop in with the beat? I forgot I had this from last week. Oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not gonna do it. I just forgot I had it. Man, you probably you should can, do it. You can though. do it. I'm not gonna do it. I just am, I'm riding the wave. I'm not I'm, gonna do it. I'm, I'm gonna do it. Right Anyways, uh, gaming wave. moment of the week. Uh, Dead Eye, why don't you start us off? What do you got for us? Gladly I will start us off. Spin so, us a tail. Uh, so I finished my Pokedex, and so now I've been able to get into some other games on Switch, and one of those, was the first thing I needed to do when I was done with Pokemon was I got right back to where I left off on Link's Awakening. That was priority number one when it came to my Switch. So this week I woke the Windfish. I finished Link's Awakening. Nice. So Because I was almost to the end right when Pokemon came out, and I just had to had to drop it for Pokemon. So uh, I've, I just feel like I, I have a new invigorated spirit for finishing some video games. And I, I know I'll be talking about that a lot over the next couple of months because i think that's what i plan on doing being that there's not a lot i want to buy in the next six months uh so that that felt good to have that accomplishment and i was like yeah i don't really need any new games i can just i have this huge backlog of really good stuff i need to close out and then it's friday i'm, I'm working from home on friday and our, our man baxi baby thanks for letting me know by the way i had to find out through like the grapevine like where's my buddy at lunchtime is that true yeah you didn't tell me. Well, the you next didn't, episode, of you didn't tell me you work from home today. How do you like that? I had, to I had to find an empty desk today. Yeah, it was payback. Yeah, okay, that's fair. So <laughs> I'm, I'm working from home, and 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 Bax messaged me. He's like, "Man, what's going on at work?" And I was like, "Actually, I'm I'm at home training today." And he's like, "Cool, cool. Yeah, you at home? You download those hum humble bundle games." He sent me like a Sega slash Capcom humble bundle like two years ago and i was like yeah man maybe i'll maybe i'll download those like not on the work computer but maybe i'll download them <laughs> he's like yeah the work computer you download them and so then i started thinking i was like why would he bring that up at random i look at my email no he sent me the australian wildfire relief humble bundle that he gifted me and i was like what games are in here it's like 20 games uh it had uh including Hollow Knight. It, it, it had some really good titles in it. I had it pulled up here, some, some of the really good stuff. Um, just a lot of good indie games. And, and he's like, you can't be mad that I, I spent money on getting you these games. He's like, I wasn't wasting money. I'm helping the animals. He's like, you <laughs> love animals. I was like, ah, oh, Max, you got me. Uh, you know, just so, some good looking indie titles that I had heard of. Oh, Mr. Shifty was in there. Uh, Primal Carnage, which is a dinosaur shooter. I'm very excited <laughs> to play. But I had to make the first game I downloaded and played I had to, I had to download and play Euro Truck Simulator oh, 2. Oh, dear God. <laughs> Come on. Oh, man. Euro Truck Simulator 2. And I was like, oh, I hope my laptop can play it. I downloaded it. I fired it up. And then right away, it like launches right in. Like, make your trucker. Like, why do, you, why do I have to pick an avatar for my trucker? <laughs> and, and I'm like, there's only women truckers in this game? I was like, oh, no, there's, there's men truckers too because it defaults women. I was like, well, this is already better than Escape from Tartaga or whatever. Tartaga. <laughs> Tortuga. <laughs> Where, <laughs> like, like, there's more inclusiveness in Euro Truck Simulator 2. <laughs> Uh, and it's like handle driving a truck. It's like pick the brand of truck. I was like, well, I want to drive a Mercedes truck. It's like, and so there's like all these options for building out like your truck. It's like, what city do you want to start in? I was like, I don't know. And I picked like Liverpool or something. <laughs> And like I'm like clicking through. I feel like I should be reading like the text. I'm like, no, nah, hell no, I'm not doing any of that. And all of a sudden, like I'm in my truck, and I have my uh, my uh, PlayStation controller hooked into. My, my PC so I can play the controller because I'm not a keyboard and mouse guy. And I find out that a controller is not compatible with this game. I either need like a wheel because <laughs> it's hardcore. It's a truck simulator or I need to do like keyboard and mouse. So I didn't have even my mouse on me. I was like, I guess I'm going keyboard and trackpad on this son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and like I'm, on. I'm sure i was supposed to be doing something to figure out a route, but I was like, I don't know, whatever, screw it. And I just start driving. 
and I'm like ramming through stuff like get out of my way I'm Euro trucking and just like smashing stuff I made it like two blocks before I flipped that son of a bitch I'm just wow. I, rammed, I rammed a police car off the road oh boy cause I was like why is everyone driving on the wrong side of the road oh it's Europe it was it was the thrill of a lifetime playing Euro Truck Simulator 2, a game that just months ago on Muster Bust we just destroyed for even existing. <laughs> <laughs> and then a, a copy <laughs> fell into my lap thanks to the kindness of our friend. So I had to play that. So, uh, Bax, thanks for, thanks for allowing me to play Euro Truck Simulator 2. <laughs> I would normally judge you for picking that uh, game and making it like the first game you play out of that humble bundle, but I can't because if you go look at my Xbox and you turn it on and you went to my games list, you'd find Cluster Trucker, which, is, <laughs> <laughs> which, <laughs> which was a free download through the Game Pass that was like, it's got co-op, how well we got to download it and give it a try. Yeah. So, yeah, um, that's not my gaming moment of the week, Thank though. Thank God. <laughs> we trucker boys now. Yeah, um, yeah. We this is this is now the truck simulation podcast. Get out of my way, I'm big trucking. mother trucker V eight. What was it? The off road eight wheeler or whatever that one was. Yeah, that was. Yep. There were there was a couple of those. Why are there so many <laughs> semi truck driving video guys? <laughs> big mother trucker is the best one though. Uh, big mother trucker is is the goat. Um, but no. So gave me moment of the week. Uh, I've I've been enjoying a lot of the new Shovel Knight DLC, so King of Cards. Um, I, I think I've talked a little bit about it, but I, it's just it's a ton of fun. The card game is fun. The, I I got through the first boss now and um, having a good time. But my my actual like moment would have been Community Night um, on Friday. We started playing League of Legends. Boo! I know, I know. You don't like it. And so, but the cool thing was is that I've, uh, you know, I've, I've built a small community here on Mixer and people like to hang out even if it's not a game that they've played. And I get a lot of people are like, well, what kind of game is this? And, you know, and um, is it free? And, you know, they start asking questions. Well, we were having a lot of fun. I mean, we were having a lot of fun playing this game. And so because of it, I ended up getting like three people to download the game and that they've never played League. They've never played a MOBA. And so they're downloading it. They're like, damn it, like, damn it, Grim, why'd you get me into this? And then so one of them is uh, his name's Street Alpha. And he stops by the podcast from time to time. He <laughs> got into the game and played one round and was like, uh-oh, I hate you, Grim. And, and I'm like, wait, wait, why do you hate me? Is it that bad? And he's like, no, this is that type of game that I could just lose myself in. I was like, I told you, dude, I warned you, this game is dangerous. He's like, and then so we played a, we played a couple rounds with him, and he's like, gets to this point where he can unlock his next champ, right? Because when you first start playing, you can unlock champs pretty quickly with like because they're low cost with the in-game currency. He's like, oh my god! I'm like, what? He's like. This UFO skin, I need it. Like, I'm like, oh, no, man, no. No, it's a slippery slope. You can't do it. And then he's like, oh, it's a... He, when he goes, oh, my God, it's a polar bear. I need this one, too. And then Wait, what? There's a polar bear in League of Legends Yeah, his though? name's Volley Bear. And what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at Volley Bear. I love bears! <laughs> yeah. And then he finds the cat. He finds Ziggs. He's like, oh, my God, Ziggs. This guy's crazy looking. And you can just see how excited he was getting about, about all this. So... It uh, it was a good time, and then like Steve uh, Stevo ended up picking up the game, started playing it. Really was getting into it. We had player one Miggy who was starting just getting started. Sean is like Sean Flax like losing his shit about this game right now. He's like he's like I'm gonna study and become a professional jungler within League of Legends, and I love it. I just love seeing all this excitement that's kind of gotten built around the game because of because of what Owl, myself, have been trying and, and Spidey have been trying to do around League. And it's just like the new season's right upon us, so it's perfect timing for people to get excited about. And, yeah, it's just it's a really good time. Doesn't he look cool? It's just a ripoff of Golden Compass. Yeah, but but he's cooler. Uh, man. Ha, get, cause I've bear. never seen Golden Compass, so I cannot confirm or deny one way or another. Told you. I win. I mean, polar bears are, are pretty cool. I mean, throwing armor on it doesn't make it that much cooler. Uh, yeah, it does. It would be cool if it wasn't League of Legends, if it was a fun game. <laughs> Throw them out of here. <laughs> Fine. 
I'll just make you, you can't throw me anywhere. I'll sue. I have whiplash. I'll just make you play Uder than the guy that wears a bear because you killed it. Mm. I don't like that. Yeah, well, he's in the league. Well, good thing I don't play That's league. That's why Volleybear's there, because he's mad at him because it was his brother. Is that true? No, I don't think so. <laughs> it's a good lore, though. Because as soon as, as soon as it's a bear out for vengeance, I'm back in. <laughs> I have to look it up. Maybe it is. Uh, anyways. Um, I mean, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Craig's asking me who's the League of Legends character that sounds like Starscream. That is Viger or Vagar or however you want to pronounce it. I call it Viger. I call him Viger. But anyways. Uh, you, you need to ask Owl that one because he'll actually respond in the voice. Anyways, uh, yeah, that that's my gaming moment of the week. Was just I like when what I'm doing and 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 the fun that I'm showing can inspire people to to try something maybe that's outside their comfort zone. Um, and that's what happened over the weekend. It was a lot of a lot of it was a good time. And because of it, that was Friday. So then Sunday we ended up playing more league and we played with some of those people and um, we started to teach them the game. So. That's it. Cool. Miggy, Miggy cool. Uh, what was your game moment of the week? <laughs> Hi, player one, Miggy. Uh, resident <laughs> mobile guy. Um, and we, this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> this weekend, I quit League of Legends and I hate Jason. <laughs> Actually, no, I didn't quit. Um, Just wasn't, I was in the mood to, I was in the chill mode. You know, I just wanted to, you know, pick at some, some pixelated blocks and listen to some lo-fi and just relax. You know, that's just. I don't do. I don't want to borderline rage and playing um, league because I overclick. And after after listening to you, uh, after you get done um, with your stream, uh, giving your tutorial lesson, I learned a lot. So I, I need to quit overclicking. Um, oh yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I'm I'm, I'm gonna come back to you. How can you overclick? It's clicking the game. No, no. So what he's saying, which this is, I guess, the part I left out is that after each session, after each night, I um, I would sit back and people like Sean Flack would, would ask me about like feedback of their gameplay, so I would kind of break down their gameplay and say, hey, here's what I noticed. And we'd pull up their stats and we would look at their stats and say, the reason why this is so low is because you're over-clicking. You go to click on an enemy to shoot them and you spaz out and you keep clicking, which is, allowing, which is resetting your attack. Mm -hmm. You're never actually attacking because you keep clicking. So Clicky, the game is, yes, that's true. It's a joke, but it's true. You're moving a lot. But when you actually go to attack, you want to click on an enemy and you kind of want to chill out so that your character actually auto attacks. Yep. And then you, you know, cast your moves or whatever you want to do, but the auto attacking is important. And people start there and they just start rapid firing and clicking. They never actually auto attack. And so then their damage output is just, you know, nothing. Yep. So, well, good. I'm glad you picked that up. But, um, no, actually, my, my moment was um i've been addicted to this um to this mobile game for like the longest time it's called honkai impact third now <laughs> it's super weeby <laughs> if you I, <laughs> I was gonna try to keep a straight face i was really this. gonna try yeah. but, no, Ooh, but we went but, off the deep end though but seriously look look up look at um yeah, look up some gameplay footage it looks it's amazing like the graphics do you have um, to set your phone to japanese to even no, download that no it's what an, is it it's, called it's honkai h-o-n-k-a-i space impact space uh three rd how um, do you find these games um, I think the weebs have a whole network. Well, going through the um the game the um Google Play Store, and I saw it popped up, saw the thumbnail, and I was like, you know what? I'll go ahead and check this out. And this is the best action RPG that I've ever played on mobile. Now, I did reach out to the company, you know, like you know, give them some praise, and I was talking, had some questions, and they respond back quite me, cool, you know, quite quickly. Um, they're they're really cool. They nice. the and the thing is, it's a gotcha type game, um, which meaning that you um you know uh what is it like you can uh pick pull items out of box you earn currency and then you get a random selected box but the thing is th that mechanic is kind of buried like you can enjoy the game just from playing it and absorbing the story and i forget that there's a gotcha mechanic in there for me to get new characters because i'm enjoying the story and the gameplay and i'm earning other things in there nice. so it's really cool now what they're doing is there are microtransactions in there and they take that money and they're putting it towards another project that they have, which is actually a full console slash PC release of a game. It's called Genshin Impact. And um, a lot of people in China are upset about it because it's like a clone of um, Breath of the Wild. But this is it's free to play. Hmm. Um, but yeah, it, it's amazing. Graphics. I just signed up for the beta. Um, but the big thing that um, that I've, I was addicted to was they released this mobile game for the PC and it has full controller support so when you plug in your xbox controller 
the buttons are mapped out on there. It said press the B button for this. And it's like, it syncs your gameplay. So you just lo- uh, log in ah. your account. So if I'm playing on the phone and then it syncs it, I go play on my PC and then it syncs and this goes back and forth. So I've been having a lot of fun diving deeper into the game, learning the mechanics. I got um, uh, our boy EA Spuds to uh, friend me and um, and I got one of my other buddies to uh, friend me on there. But yeah, it is it is a super weeby game. I mean, the animation is beautiful. The graphics are great. Um, it's just an action adventure uh, beat em up. And another cool thing about it is each character has their own like attack like one might use a, a heavy sword and it actually feels heavy one um use a scythe um there's melee attack there's characters that use guns there's um ninjas and they all feel different um though my one of my favorite examples is there's these two girls in there they call the vodka twins um they both take up their own like slots and you can um, switch out anytime. You can have up three characters on the field at a time and you can switch out freely. Now, once their specials um, build up, their icons will glow. So you're attacking, you're attacking, you touch their icon, they'll switch out and they'll attack as they switch out. You do their, you do their uh, special and it summons out one of the other twins. So both of them are on the field at the same time and you're attacking, they're alternating back and forth. And then when you do the special again, they'll do a combo attack on the field. I mean, they put so much in here. You follow them on YouTube, they, they're doing, they're putting out like short videos, little movies music videos um they even did like a a little animation they've got comics out i mean this i think this is the first um mobile game company that i've become invested in and i follow like on everything and i'm deeply involved in i mean like this this is one game that i will like without shame honestly say that i love this and i highly recommend it to anybody that um you know is in anime and that wants to dab you can get on pc and it's all free to play so cool i've been hooked on that all weekend (laughs) Now, what about the uh, stamina issue where you run out of stamina and then if you want to keep playing the game, you either have to wait or you have to buy stamina? Nope, I haven't encountered that. Like, this game is really giving. Like, I haven't... uh, The only time I stop to play is when I just get tired of my own. Like, I haven't encountered the issue of running out of stamina and waiting for the recharge. I, I have yet to get that. Okay, I'm just reading the reviews. It's either I love it, the stamina, Mm -hmm. or how it's basically an app that steals your personal information from your phone and those are all one stars yeah yeah there's there's somebody okay, that's, that's say, all made up that, that uh, last one was fake <laughs> I was gonna say there's somebody that's gonna say ready to go along with it Mickey's like yeah I'll give my information <laughs> Mickey's like yeah I don't care download the PC version then but I mean it's good to see that they're like and I wish more companies were like this company but it's good to see where your money is going like what other projects that they're putting it into um, if you do like Put money into the game and that's the one thing i love I, I see where my money is going to the consoles you know it's uh it's an honest shame that uh with our gaming moments of the week i'm the only one that played a real video game this week with uh, <laughs> euro truck simulator 2 it's uh it's shocking it's honestly <laughs> shocking <laughs> disappointed both of you <laughs> i'll do better next week no I, you, you won't it's okay <laughs> <laughs> My death rating review finally coming. Uh, <laughs> no, I, I mean it's good that you're you found a, an experience you like on the mobile phone platform. It looks like Grim's downloading it right now. No, I'm still reading about the stamina thing. Every for every six minutes, it's one point of stamina. Uh, when story costs six to eight per run, and some events cost twenty per run, everything else in the game seems really good, uh, and a five star rating of worth. But for the stamina alone, I can't recommend this game to anyone. So it's a one star. Mm. Wow, that, that's the most aggressive one I've that's seen. That's damning. But yeah, so I, I don't know what the stamina thing is, but here's my here's my critical thought on this game so far, is that for all the stuff that Mickey just said about how great this game is and, and how they're doing all these things, they could probably do better with the thumbnails that they decided to put on the Android app download because it doesn't show me a single screenshot of the actual gameplay. Is it just anime you know, boobs? No, it's no, it, no. It's like it's like menus and then like cutscenes yeah. and like I think this is probably the only shot that looks in game to me, which is just a character standing in the middle doing nothing. A yeah. lot of the mobile games have that problem. Like in the store, it's like you have to like. A lot of the see, mobile games have the problem is they're poorly advertised. You, <laughs> well, no, no, it's true. No, I, you 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 speak the truth. Like if you're if you go scroll through like Facebook or whatever, you might see like there's this one that I'm sick of seeing the F it's called Kiss of War. You're looking at it. It's got like an interesting cutscene, but it's got like this this bucks and women and. and 
and she's just standing there and there's like I guess some guy Fuck like some playing, woman you say <laughs> there's like some guy taking a picture and playing card games with her and that's it it's like kiss of war and then he's like okay let me go to the app store and see what the game really is about and it's one of those base builders and you set up a defense for us it has nothing to do with the, with the um with the the advertisements you see so a lot of the mobile games do do like that and those are like the crappy games that deceive you okay well we gave Mickey his uh six minutes of uh mobile gaming Dang, what's the six minutes jeez yeah, M- Mickey we really let you go there we let we let the wind get under your wings and yeah. you soared with it so I you should have clipped, clipped no me. we didn't want to clip yeah. you we we do enough clipping clipping of you <laughs> yeah, you yeah, were yeah. passionate and yeah. excited <laughs> about this game this week <laughs> so we, we want to let you have it without taking that away from you but uh that is uh the Zilla update <laughs> we went over our gaming moments of the week um if you enjoy all of our fun banter, don't forget there's a lot of great shows available for you at GameZillaMedia.com, uh, including The Legend of Retro, our retro gaming podcast, uh, Noobs and Dragons, Tabletop, uh, Tabletop Gamings, it's a great storytelling podcast, Noiseland Arcade, All Things Simpsons, it's a episode-by-episode episode, uh, deep dive starting at episode one. If you're a Simpsons fan like me, you'll love it. Uh, of course, Last Action Podcast uh, gives you your fix of action movies every single week. So head on over to GameZillaMedia.com and, you know, give one of the other shows a listen if you've never listened to them before. And again, I want to encourage you, if you enjoy this show, enjoy any of the other shows on the GameZilla Media Network, please consider going and joining our, our patrons, patreon.com slash GameZilla Media, where you'll have exclusive access to our $5 exclusive content level. Uh, but starting, starting this month, uh, $1 a month will get you, what's the name of it? The... State of the Zilla. State of the Zilla. Access to State of the Zilla, the new $1 a month show uh, where we're just going to be talking about things we're passionate about as a group. Mobile gaming? I, if I'm, you show up I'm to sure one, we'll, I'm sure, you will get the opportunity. I'm sure the quality control on this will be top-notch and we'll never talk about mobile gaming. So. <laughs> we got that, but that's the kind of quality control, though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're top too right. Notch. All right, Grim, you got anything else? Uh, no, just uh, again, thanks to our patrons and a uh, big shout out to JJ and Mark for being our, our, our latest uh, patrons there on patreon.com slash games on media. And yeah, we will uh, keep everything going over there in the discord all week long. So if you love the podcast and you want more, you want to interact with us live, that's where you do it in the discord. So other than that, I'm going to get back to uh, to gaming and I think you should get back to Figuring out what's going on with your spine slash uh, listen, body. Listen, you don't need. Well, when you have butter, wh- shouldn't even have a spine. So, so grim, grim. Let me, let me. The whole thing about me getting hurt while sledding is a total lie. I knew it. Euro Truck Simulator Two is so realistic. When I flip, <laughs> when I flip my truck, I got whiplash. I did not get hit by a grown man on a sled. It's whiplash. The game is that realistic. It's that damn good. Wow. You, Sorry you, to lie to you guys. You were so ashamed of Euro Truck Driver that you had to lie to me and make up a story about sledding yeah. and being struck by a grown man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know my reflexes are too fast. I would never be hit by another man. First of all, I know your reflexes are god awful. <laughs> Oh, that that you're lying to me left and right at this point. I don't even know what's the truth anymore. Everything's a lie. I one time was in a car accident and dodged the airbag. I'm that so fast. That was not you. <laughs> that was not you. How dare you steal that man's thunder? <laughs> uh, uh, Got the reflex of an overweight house cat. Uh, All right. Thank you for tuning in to episode 296 of the Gamezilla podcast. Remember, we are your elite free DLC for all your gaming news. And until next time, game, game on. on.